All right, so in this video, I'm going to look at uh, generating graticules or coordinate grids um, in, a, in a map layout and just doing some simple editing to try to improve the, the display. Okay, so I have this, a very simple map here. We're not really focused on the map frame. Um, so the only thing that's really loaded in here is just the continental boundaries. Um, what we're mainly just going to look at is the graticules, so you can just basically ignore the map um, in, in this example. Okay, so I've picked an extent. I have the this map frame active. So I'm I'm centered over Europe here, and I've set the projection to Europe Lambert conformal conic, uh, so maintaining shape. All right, so what I like to do is add a graticule um, coordinate or latitude longitude grid to this map. Okay, so I'm going to turn off, get out of the active view for the for the map so we're back in the layout view. Okay, so to add a coordinate grid, you have to go to insert and then grid, but you have to make sure you're clicked on the map frame. So click on the map frame here, grid, and then we want to add a grid. And you can see there's some defaults. Again, a graticule is basically a latitude longitude grid, whereas a coordinate grid would be the coordinates relative to whatever the projection is. So if you had like a UTM zone, it could be, um, you know, the it would be like easting and northing. You can also add grids for reference, you know, where you break the the map up into um, columns like A through whatever and rows one through whatever for reference. Okay, so what I'm going to just do is pick the base um, black uh, horizontal labeled grid here. So it's just the default. And you can see it draws in there with its whatever the default settings happen to be. Um, I generally find with these you have to do some editing to get what you want. Uh, I generally find the defaults to be a little too dense. Um, and sometimes the labels are a little too small. So what we'll do is work with that. So notice once I have added a coordinate grid, um, it shows up here in the list for the layout. If we double click on that, we can get to the format map grid window or pane. Um, all right, so a couple notes. So first off, if you want to change the, like how often there are labels or lines or tick marks, um, you generally have to turn off this automatically adjust option uh, because it'll just kind of automatically try to like f go back to like original settings. So you've turned that off. Um, you can also change the origin, we don't need to, um, and we'll just, I'm just, I'll just show you some of the, the settings. So you can change the, the line, um, you can define your own edges, boundaries, um, so if you didn't want to fill the whole map, for example. Um, I'm not, we're not really going to fiddle with that too much. Instead, what we'll look at here is editing the individual components. Okay, so first off, you can remove or add components. So here are the options. So for example, you could add interior ticks, um, and that puts in tick marks in the interior there. It's, I would argue, not necessary, but you know, it's an option. So if we remove the grid lines, then you can see the ticks there. Um, you could add intersecting points where the different um, lines intersect in the map space. And then we can turn off the ticks. So you can see that pattern there. Um, so anyway, there's there's some options that aren't you know one by default. So I'm going to add back in the lines. And I'm going to remove the the points. Okay, so if you want to edit the um, the like the frequency of the different components, you have to click on it first. So we'll start off with the labels. And instead of having it label every five degrees, let's just bump it up to ten. And then it should automatically change to keep the longitude and latitude synced. Um, that's still maybe a little too dense. Um, so let's just pump it up to 20. There we go. So that should thin it out a good bit. 
Okay, so actually let's bump it down to 10. Actually, we were just working with uh, the labels. I was kind of looking at the grid line, so we'll just leave it at 10. So if we go to the grid lines, we could do the same. So let's just bump this up to 10. There we go. So now we only have labels every 10 degrees and grid lines every 10 degrees. The ticks are the major ticks, so to get them to line up with the grids, um, the grid lines and the labels, we'll set that to 10. You see they lined up there. And then for the intermediate ones, they're at every half degree now, so let's just set it 5. There we go. So that's a lot cleaner, I think. And then once you have this, um, once you have this defined, then you can actually edit what each what the different features look like. So we'll start off with the labels and then work our way through some of the other components. Okay, so let's move to the labels. Uh, first off, this offset specifies how far the labels are going to be from the tick mark. And as you as I moved it up there, that's obviously too much. Um, I generally find the default for that is fine. Um, but you feel free, you obviously can play with it if you want. Um, one thing you can do is make the labels vertical. So for we could turn the west and east labels vertical. So you see that turn them vertical there. Um, I generally think that looks good and can save some space. You'll notice that it didn't change um, these markings, and that's because they're not the vertical. It's because the the longitude lines are at an angle and coming off the side of the page there. Um, we'll actually look at removing those in a little bit, So, but we'll just leave them for now. Um, if you go to symbol here, you can edit the text. Again, it's just like any of the text element editing. So change the font, so on and so forth. I'm just going to make them a bit bigger. I always feel like the defaults are a bit small. Let's hit apply. Yeah, I think that looks a little bit better. And again, we'll, we'll do some additional editing. Um, all right, so let's go back to the grid lines. Let's say that we wanted these to be maybe a little less obvious. So I'm going to go in here. Here we have a collar, collar properties. So one thing we could do that maybe would make them a little bit less noticeable is we could set the transparency up a bit. Let's just make them like... I don't know, roughly 50% transparent. And let's apply that. So now they're a little dulled. You could also change the base color, so maybe make them like a gray. And, all right, like, let's see, go back in here and do the color properties again. So again, we could set this up a little bit. There we go. So that's a little less intrusive. So anyway, you can you can edit that. And then say if you wanted the tick marks to match, then again you'd have to remember what color you used here. Uh, so yeah, we got 178, 178, 178. So if we wanted to apply that to the ticks, we could do the same thing. So properties, and just have it match 178. 178, 178. So now I'm realizing it probably would have been easier to just remember the hex code, but it's just B2, B2, B2. Um, okay, apply. So now those are different, and then we can make them maybe a little bit thicker. There should be options to increase the length. Um, Never seem to find that when I'm looking in here, but you should be able to make the tick shorter or longer if you want. Um, again, I'm not really sure where that is in the menu here. Okay. Um, all right, let's go back to this and let's go to the major ticks. And do the same thing. So we'll set this to, let's do this down here now, B2, 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 at the 50% transparency, and apply. 
So now we should have ticks um, that are all basically tick marks and and grid lines that are all basically the same. Um, I think I maybe want to use the same font for the for the labels. So I'm going to go back to the labels, and we'll just change this. Let's see, color properties, and we'll set this to the same thing, but we won't set any transparency on it. And apply that. So makes them a little, that's probably a little too dim. So let's just step it up a little bit. That looks a little bit better. All right, so that's a fairly simple grid. Um, so now let's say that we're done with this and we would like to edit it now further. So one option is you could export this out and do it in Illustrator or some other vector graphics editing software. Um, another option is you can, once it's done, convert it into a graphic and then edit it as a graphic. Um, you really shouldn't do that until you're done working with the maps because if you move in the map space, the grid won't update and then it will be incorrect. So this is something you generally want to do at the end. Okay, so to do that, we have to click on the object and do convert to graphic. And then once it's converted to a graphic, you're going to want to ungroup the components. So we'll do ungroup. And then you're now able to like edit the different parts of the components. You can see they all popped up here. So for example, let's say we don't want the um, meridian or longitude labels that come off the side. You just go in here and delete those. Oops, I clicked on the back frame there. Okay, cool. Um, so that did that, and then we have some similar issues with the latitude lines up here and here. All right, well, another thing that might be worth considering is note that when we generated, whenever they intersect, it didn't always add both labels. Um, so I'm gonna paste a couple of these in so we can add them. So remember, we had um, plotted these out at 10 degrees. So that would mean this is 50, right? And then we could do the same thing, move it across, oops, copy, and then paste, and then we can paste a copy of it over here. And we should be able to get it to line up. Oh, I guess it doesn't actually come out at the same spot. So we have to follow the line across. Again, that just kind of has to do with the projection. So anyway, you can obviously move those around. This is the 30 line, so I believe that's also 30 there. So let's make a copy of that, and we'll move this over. You can see the kind of smart alignments generally really helps, helps us uh, improve this. Okay, I think other than that, it seems all right. Um, we got a lot of density up here, but that's kind of um, it's kind of unavoidable just because everything starts to converge when you're using these conic projections. Um, but I think that works. Okay, so anyway, that's just a short example of just doing some grid editing um, in RGS Pro, both as a grid and then also um, some further refinement as a graphic.